Hey, good morning everyone, Pastor Brett here. Uh, just wanted to share something a little quick, um, interesting um, finding here. Uh, my wife and I are reading through the book of Isaiah, and uh, uh, of course, all through the book of Isaiah, um, you see the absolute sovereignty of Almighty God, and uh, how that the Lord um, uh, revealed, Isaiah prophesied of Jesus um, more than any other of the Old Testament prophets. Isaiah spoke of Jesus more than any of them. And uh, um, uh, this is uh, part of his prophetic utterance of, of the coming Messiah. In Isaiah 49, um, I'm going to read verses 13 through 17 but uh or 13 through 16 but um but i want to focus on verse 16 and i'll show you something here that i think it's interesting and i i think it's something that um you should know uh because modern scholarship gets it wrong they get it wrong and you should know this uh so i'll say father thank you for your word i pray that you bless it to our spirit that you strengthen us and encourage us and help us lord god to defend the truth lord god um and uh um thank you for showing me the importance of this truth and we'll give you thanks and praise father god thank you for these wonderful people father god bless them father god i pray with your presence in jesus name amen hallelujah you have to excuse me my Sinuses get um, worked up from time to time. My COPD is just yeah, nothing I can do about it. Thank the Lord. Oh, I praise Him. Um, and uh, uh, let me um, let me do something real quick because I look like I'm like split here in the middle. Turn this light on and see how that works. Okay. All right, there you go. So, um, uh, Isaiah um, 49, 13. says, Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing. O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. It's it's so amazing. Now, I'm, I'm reading this, and I'm, I'm in tears because I'm thankful that Jesus would... Um, love us so much, that the Lord would love us so much that um, he would have mercy upon us. Uh, well, this is, a, of course, a direct reference to the people of Israel uh, that were um, going into, going through, and eventually came out of the 70 years of captivity, um, Babylonian ca captivity. Um, this is uh, uh, speaks to us, too. It speaks to us. It's amazing. Um, and I'm thankful. He says in verse 14, But Zion said, Now he says, he tells them to sing, tells the angels to sing. Uh, he tells the earth to be joyful. He, he, The people of the earth, of course, break forth into singing, all mountains. I mean, all of creation is singing his praise because he's had mercy upon his people. How did he show that mercy? He showed their mercy through the cross. This is prophetic of the cross. This is prophetic of the coming Messiah and the mercy that he had shown and will show. But he had also shown mercy to his people by delivering them through Babylon, uh, the Babylonian captivity. So you see the dual role in this um, utterance here by Isaiah. And he says, uh, verse 14, what does Zion say? What does his people say? Uh, they said, oh, the Lord hath forsaken me and my Lord hath forgotten me. Yeah, yeah. You feel like the Lord's forgotten? Do you feel like He's forsaken you? He hasn't. Listen to what the Lord says. Can a woman forget his sucking child, her sucking child? Can a woman forget her sucking child, her infant child? That she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? It's a rhetorical question. Obviously, my mother, most mothers, nine out of ten mothers are not going to leave their children. They're not going to forsake their children. Um, but he says, they may forget. Yea, they may forget. Yet will I not forget thee. 
I will not forget thee. And then he, he says these words. Isaiah says these words. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Of course, the Lord's talking about that protection, that the walls of Jerusalem, the walls of walled cities were cities of protection. I mean, they were, they were, the walls were symbolic of God's protection around his people. And so, um, but the most interesting part here is that he says, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. All right. So Jesus had to be nailed through the palms of his hands. Amen. This is the word is very clear. And we know this now modern, um, both secular, um, um, uh, science and and medicine and modern theology modern theological thought has agreed and ha have changed the word of god now because they don't understand how jesus could have been nailed through his palms all right now remember what he told john when john said i want to see the nail prints okay all right he had to be nailed through his palms all right now it's it's proven that if you were nailed here, the weight of his body it would have ripped right out in between his fingers. There's no way that the palms, nailed through the palms, could have held his weight. All right? No way. The weight of his body, and of course he was a, Jesus was a big, strong man. The weight of his body would have ripped right through. All right, well, that's obvious, okay? But what they fail to recognize, and, and, and they, they, didn't, they don't even consider this, and I don't understand this. Um, if, first of all, the Word of God says that he had to be nailed through his palms, all right, uh, then you have to accept that. So then how could they have held up? Roman crucifixion had the habit of tying their criminals down so that they couldn't fight, number one. They also knew that the weight would rip through as they nailed through the hands. They did not nail Jesus here. And even if they did nail others here so that the bone would hold, it doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. But they had the habit of tying them down so that they couldn't fight while they were being nailed. Nobody's just going to lay there and say, go ahead and nail me down. You know, they tied them down. And then they also knew that that rope would hold them and hold their weight. So now they don't slip through. They can't get out. They're not going to rip and pull out. There's no way it's going to happen because they're tied down. So, and that's just, you know, known. That's a, a something that's known about the Roman practice of crucifixion. So that's obvious. It has to be that way. It has to be that way because the word says he's going to be nailed through his hand, the palm of his hand. Now they say, oh, well, this is part of the palm. Uh-uh. No, it's not. Because the Hebrew kapayim, all right, means the hollow of the hand. It's from the base of the hand to the base of the fingers the hollow of the hand. Well, where's the hollow of the hand? I mean, you know, you just look at the hand and you see that that's the hollow of the hand. So we know that Jesus had to be nailed through his palms. But when you look at uh, John chapter 20, I believe, I'm going to find it. John 20, 28, I think it was. Um, it's John 20. And uh, you see that John, that um, Thomas um, was the, of course, the doubter. And look at what Thomas, uh, John chapter 20, and now uh, start in verse 24. He says, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came the first time. After the crucifixion, Jesus came, revealed himself to his disciples. Thomas wasn't with them. And the other disciples, therefore, said unto him, we have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands, in his hands, 
the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. It's good that Thomas was there. He said after eight days again, Jesus, again, his disciples were with them and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. So Jesus popped in. <laughs> Jesus is so cool, man. He was so cool. He just popped in and he said he came specifically to answer Thomas, to show Thomas, to prove to Thomas that he had risen from the grave. And he said to Thomas, verse 27, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. Hands. He didn't say wrists. He said hands. And thrust it into my side, thrust and, and reach hither your hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. And then, of course, Thomas's words, historic words, hallelujah, in my Lord and my God. He just humbled himself and said, my Lord and my God, hallelujah. So the obvious truth is that Jesus was nailed through the palms of his hands, um, and I, I, I bring this to you because this has been brought to me by Muslims uh, um, over the years, and many Muslims. Uh, they, 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 the one thing that a Muslim will try to do is they'll try to shake your faith and cause you to doubt the Word of God. And if they can cause you to doubt the Word of God, then they pretty much have you. Um, I've seen them do it to people. And uh, I, I tell you these things because I want you to be equipped, be prepared to understand these things so that if someone questions you, hallelujah, you can give them a reason for the hope that's in you. The apologia, the rational, intelligent defense, hallelujah. And not that we need to defend the word of God now. The word of God will defend itself. Hallelujah. But if you come to them with a King James Version, and you have no confusion, you have no doubt, you don't have any question about where the Word of God is. Can you show, when the King James onlyists say, show me a Bible, give me the Word of God, show me a copy of the Scriptures that I can trust in. Well, amen. And I'll hand you. When a Muslim said to me, uh, yeah, but your Bible's been tampered with. I said, my Bible hasn't been tampered with. Oh, yeah, you, you have so many different English versions and you can't trust them. You don't know. I, I know, because I have one. I don't have... I'm not confused by all of the versions. And I mean, you know, hey, look here. I have um, my 1901 ASV, rebound version. Nice, right? Beautiful Bible. Love it. I love it. It's great. But it's not complete. It's missing so many portions of Scripture. Um, uh, it, it is the Word of God, but it's not the whole Word of God. I have my 77 that I rebound. This is a 1977 um, New American Standard Version. Um, great translation, but it's not complete. Um, here's a uh, Cambridge ESV. Um, this is the, um, I keep forgetting the name of this Bible. This is the uh, um, Topaz, the ESV Topaz uh, um, it's a beautiful Bible. Oh, and I loved the ESV. I mean, I was an ESV junkie for, my goodness, for quite a while. Um, but it's not complete. It's not the whole truth. Um, in court, they say, in the court of law, they when they swear you in, they, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I want the truth. I want the whole truth, and I want nothing but the truth. And, I, and it's here in the Word of God. So when you study the Word and you study the original languages and, and you dig deep into the Word, you do exegesis like I do and I share with you. You'll find truths like this, and then you'll be able to say, with an unshakable faith, you'll be able to say, here's the truth, here's the whole truth, and here's nothing but the truth. Jesus loves you. I love you. I hope and pray that you have a great day. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name.